Coming up today, we're making Julia Child's beef braised in red wine. This is Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Dust off your copy of Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. That's where we're gonna find this recipe today. I know, what is going on, right? This cookbook cover still intact and the pages aren't falling out and it looks like new and shiny. What is going on? <laughs> I will explain at the end of this episode. For now, I just want to get into the cooking. Find the recipe in the very mysterious cookbook. Boeuf a la mode, braised beef pot roast. Braised beef is a wonderful party dish. Anyone? It is not only delicious to smell, look at, and eat, but you have no worries about overdone meat. Sounds like Dr. Seuss. And garnished with braised carrots and onions. Let's get cooking. Now there was a whole bunch of stuff I had to do last night. So, well, why don't we go back in time first. I'll bring you all up to speed. And we'll meet back up right here. I'm not going anywhere. What I'm gonna do here is make the red wine marinade. So I need one cup of each. Thinly sliced carrots, onions, celery, two unpeeled garlic cloves, two bay leaves, about a tablespoon of thyme, quarter cup of minced up parsley. Hi there. Uh, I'm gonna read the cookbook a little more, make sure I'm on track here, and yeah. Here is my five pounder of bottom round rump roast. It's pretty fatty on this one side. Check out all that silver skin, as they say. I'm gonna trim much of it off, and I'm gonna tie it up with some twine, and it's ready for cooking. Season, salt and pepper. Get it all up in there. I will be using my Dutch oven. Jules tells me to add in half my veggies now. Beef on top of that. Then the rest of the veggies. Oh, and the herbs. Does the order really matter? I don't know. Check out these two cloves. Those can go in. I have a bottle of red wine, Cote de Ron. Julia says in the cookbook, five cups of wine. I bought a bottle and I thought it would be enough. Turns out that's around three or so cups worth. But that's all I got and it's past 10 at night, so I gotta be confident with what I have. It's gonna work. Add in half a cup of olive oil, mosey over to the liquor cart, one third cup of brandy would be great. Lid goes on and into the fridge overnight. She's telling me to turn and baste the meat every hour or so. I will follow that as best as I can, but as I said, it's late at night. I'm probably gonna go to bed soon, so I, I wanna sleep. So what does she want from me? I'll do the best I can. I'll see you in the AM. Here we are. Transfer this to a rack. I'm gonna offer some assistance with that because she says that it will not brown if it is not dry. Given it a head start, now it just needs to dry on its own for half an hour. Bowl me. Thank you. So I use the Dutch oven as the vessel to marinate that beef. Now I need, now I need my vessel back without all the good stuff in there. We're gonna start with the browning and the braising of the beef. Well, first we're gonna start with heating the oven to 350. Do that first. Done. So there's an upcoming sauce that we're gonna have to make and it's gonna require a whole bunch of animal parts. As she says here, one or all of these to give body to the sauce. You may recognize this pig skin from my cassoulet episode. This is crazy. Uh, What Julia wants, Julia gets. After that one, I just jammed it in the freezer at the back and kind of forgot about it until now. Uh, this one doesn't have any pig nipples on here. Although I am very alarmed at the pig nipples on the skin, which is great. Neither does that. No pig nipples today. We're gonna need four to s Shit. We're gonna need four to six ounces of this stuff. That's 11. That's seven ounces. She's giving me the option between veal knuckles or split calf's feet. First of all, calves are veal, aren't they? I didn't specifically buy what she's saying. I just bought bones. Beef bones, veal bones, whatever these are. That's what I'm using. I feel like uh, bones are bones in this case. And it's got bone marrow in here and this will get the job done. I know it. Four cups of water that I'm gonna to bring to a simmer. Once the water is simmering, I'm gonna add in my fresh pork rind. 
And have you noticed that I'm not cutting it up into little pieces? I learned a valuable lesson that day. Do not, and I repeat, do not cut up little pieces of pork skin and add them into the beans. If you're gonna do that, just add big strips. That way you can identify it, you can remove it, rather than doing whatever the hell I'm doing, which is not fun in the least. In it goes. After 10 minutes, strain and rinse. Dutch oven, four to six tablespoons of pork fat. Let's take that to a medium high heat. So once the fat is just to the point of smoking, add in the beef. I need to brown it on each side. It's gonna take around 15 minutes in total. I'm gonna use my hands because I don't know how else to. It is a splashing in my face. I did, can you hear me? I did learn the lesson from Julia to use the wooden spoons to rotate like, I was using a chicken at the time, but it's working with this too. This is coming out onto the rack. Cool. Oven mitts, need them. Pour out the browning fat. Keeping the heat on, I'm gonna pour in the wine marinade. Ooh. I know I was a couple cups short of wine last night, and I think this further cements the point that that's totally fine, because I'm trying to reduce it anyway to about half. From what I gather, the beef is supposed to be in here while the marinade is reducing. I'm pretty sure. I mean, what's the difference anyway if there's no way of overcooking this beef? Once that's reduced to around half, I have six cups of beef stock. I'm gonna add enough that it comes two thirds up the side of the beef. I probably don't need all six cups. Do I? We'll see. Nah, I just add it all. Yes, yes. <laughs> Get the pig skin in there. As well as the bones, the bones. I mean, we do have a full house this evening, but we're gonna accommodate everyone. Get that to a simmer. I skimmed it as best as I can, but with so much interesting things in there, it's not gonna be a perfect skim. It's fine. I'm gonna cover it. 350 degree Fahrenheit for two and a half to three hours. And then I gotta keep like turning the meat over and checking it and making sure it's all hunky-dory. So we got no breaks here. We gotta move on to the carrots braised in butter. This is a basic recipe for cooked carrots. Cool. <laughs> Two pounds of carrots. Yeah, I'm making a lot of food today. I know that. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a feast. And then I'll have leftovers and I'll be eating that for the rest of the week. I'm prepared. Let's get peeling. Slice them. Bring over the saucepan. This is one and a half cups, 350 mils of water. I'm gonna bring that to a boil, please. A tablespoon of sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt, surprise, surprise. One and a half tablespoons of butter. Just waiting for that water to boil. In goes the carrots. In terms of what to stir this with, I got options. It's the return of the pizza spatula, or am I using my brand new Charlie Brown spatula? I don't know which one I should use, so I'm probably gonna just use them both. Cover. And this is just gonna be like a slow boil, so not as hot as usual. Liquid needs to evaporate, carrots need to become tender. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes, and I'll take a look then. You know, obviously that's not gonna evaporate with the lid on. So for the last 10 minutes, lid's off. So next up, I gotta make some brown braised onions. Um, so there, don't know why I did that. I don't even know why I'm putting them on a cutting board. Like Now we got some pearl onions. I have 18 to 24, totally. And these ones are already peeled. I found these and I was like, okay, yeah, that's gonna save some time. Not much time, but you know, every minute counts. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in a long time, it's Big Bertha. I'm gonna go over the stove and put it over there. Cool, good job, Jamie. She's telling me to use half a bay leaf in my cheesecloth, but you know, call me crazy. I'm gonna go all out today, a full bay leaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Whew. Quarter teaspoon of thyme. I'm gonna add in a couple sprigs of thyme. 
<laughs> Parsley sprigs. Four of them. I'm just gonna do four. Is that four? Good enough. This small little cheesecloth here with all these little herbs. It's in Big Bertha. One and a half tablespoons of butter, one and a half tablespoons of oil. Get that heat going. Bubbling, add in the onions. Not that. Roll those around 10 minutes. Add in half a cup of bee stock. My herb bouquet, salt and pepper. Now I'm supposed to cover these, but I can't. Birth is too big. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to switch pans. And simmer that slowly for 40 to 50 minutes. It's finished. Oy. Very exciting. Woo! You got some beef, you got some pig skin. It's a great little thing. So the beef is done when a fork can pierce it easily. Yep. Yep. Okay, that can go on that. And just put it off to side for now. This. Okay, so what has to happen? No, seriously, what has to happen? I'm asking what the hell has to happen here. Um, remove the trussing string. That's gotta be kept warm. Let's bring this back over yonder. And I'm gonna need a bowl and a sieve. Oh, thank you. Oh, the, the other thing now. Come on. Thank you. Not so much to ask. Strain the braising juice. Bones go out, I don't need them. Don't need the bones. And we can remove the pig skin. Come on, Chuck. We gotta squeeze any remaining juices out of these vegetables. Okay, we got a lot of fat. We had a lot of fat in this. Some of this can go into my fat separator. Just get this into the fridge to speed up that. I'm gonna pour this back in here. Fat, scum, whatever you call it, that stays behind. Believe me, there's more. I gotta bring that to a simmer. It's slurry time. That's one tablespoon of cornstarch, two tablespoons of Madeira wine. Give that a good old fashioned stir. Hi, can you see me? Hi. <laughs> I need to reduce this until there's three and a half cups remaining. It's hard to gauge, but I think I'm pretty close. And of course, keep it skimming. Salt, peps. Reduce to three and a half cups. Add the slurry. Simmer for three minutes. In go the onions. In go the carrots. Simmering for two minutes. I'm gonna do a classic platter to platter situation here. Whew. Look at the girth on that. We put that right there. Oh yeah. What's that feel like? Is that, yeah, I can do it. Oh! Remove the vegetables with a slotted spoon and arrange them around the meat. So I'm gonna strain this sauce one last time. Can you F off? Okay, and just lastly, a little parsley, just kind of all over the place. Order up. This is one of those meals that just reminds me of all the food that I used to eat before I started to feed myself every day. You know, and the lack of cooking skills that I had throughout the years. But before all that, someone was feeding me. It's one of those things that just, it's like, you know, it's like they don't make them like they used to sort of thing. The braising recipes in the series are just second to none, honestly, every single one of them. And this one's no different, add it to the list. Even put a little horseradish on that. You know, that's what's missing. A little horseradish, that'd be nice. Now this sauce right here, it's kind of got the vibe of French onion soup, which is, it's a good vibe to have. You know, the beef itself is just tender and soft, and obviously when you cut your way through it, easy peasy. Onions, 
carrots. Mm. That was Julia Child's Buff a la mode, aka Jamie's family's pot roast. Mm. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Thank you, Julia. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Ofra. Okay, so I gotta talk about my cookbooks. That's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. That's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. One and the same, right? This is my new cookbook. I use this today. This is the one you're familiar with. I've had this since the very beginning. I picked this up when I was living in London. So that's what it is. It's a British version of this cookbook. When Julia and co wrote this book, they originally intended it to be for American audiences and American cooks and American kitchens. They wanted to make a couple bucks overseas, right? And they tweaked some of the, the words, some of the terminology, converted some of the measurements, and then they sold it in, um, in London for me to pick up right here. You know, we've had some highs and lows with this cookbook. The shape of it is very well used. I would say very well loved. You know, the state of the book really just is similar to the state of my brain making all these recipes. Uh, that's just what this cookbook does to a man. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I decided to pick up this one right here, which is the true intended version of the book. This one, I understand a little more than this one. But I made this one work, but there's a couple things that just kind of threw me off. They measure liquids in pints. Like for example, it's like one eighth pint of cognac, which I, you know, I just don't get that in my head. I'm like one eighth pint of cognac. I don't, I have to go to this, right? 0.13 pints is 0.25 cups. Cups or I'll use milliliters. I can understand both of those, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing with pints most of the time. So I know what a pint of beer is. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I made the grilled chicken episode. Grilled chicken, that's what it's called in this cookbook. So grilled chicken in my North American brain is chicken that you grill. But in this cookbook, grilled chicken means broiled chicken. And I wasn't too privy to that information prior to filming. So it was around halfway through making the recipe that I, I realized that the, something was off. So I kind of split the difference where I grilled the chicken and then I broiled it. So I got to the finish line, but all of that could have been avoided if I just, if I just, in this cookbook, it's called broiled chicken, so it would have made a lot more sense to me. Since I'm making these videos and it's gonna be online forever, I feel like I should at least minimize some of the damage I'm doing. You know, I'm not saying that this is gonna fix all my problems. A lot of them are self-inflicted, but it's a start. So that's why I've decided to switch up my cookbook to this one right here. This one will be retired to the bookshelf for the rest of its days, but it's almost like a trophy, right? Like, you know, keep it close to my heart, but also keep it out of the kitchen. Also, I should note, this goes for volume two as well. Okay, bye-bye.